Good afternoon everyone, it's Brian from Beat Turismo once again and today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the adaptive cruise control in the BMW 530e xDrive iPerformance. Now this car, this particular car, is equipped with the adaptive cruise control. So it will be different if you have a traditional cruise control equipped vehicle. I believe the setup for all these vehicles is going to be the same, no matter if you have a 3 series, 5 series, X, uh, M car, and so on. So here's what you got to do. Um, you have to be driving, the car has to be on, and you simply can press this button here. And now cruise control is active. And all automatically, right away, it's going to seek out the car that's in front of you in your lane. Um, I can't show you the heads-up display, but um, no, you can just kind of barely make it out. It's flashing at you, so we're not going to leave that on. The set speed is indicated there in green. And we're going way slow right now. We're going to set it a bit higher than the speed limit just so we get the effect of following somebody. No matter what, we're, we're going to catch up to the car in front of us is what I'm trying to go for here. So you can tell by the symbol there in the middle that the vehicle in front of us has been identified and the four green bars are meant to indicate our following distance. Let's set that to the minimum. Oh, went too far. So now we're going to minimize our following distance because I've set it to just one bar of following distance. Again, uh, if you recall, we set the cruise control speed to, I think it was 65, 66, 65, there we go. We're maintaining a gap behind the vehicle in front of us. We're only going 50 right now because they're only going 50 right now. And since I pushed that button, uh, my foot hasn't been used to do anything in this car. I think that's worth noting. We are on gasoline right now because the battery is discharged, but we have a big hill that we're climbing. So it's probably for the best. So where, where this system and, and any system like it on any other manufacturer gets a little uh, weird is when you do things like change lanes, make a make a turn or if the car in front of you makes a turn or changes lanes then the car has to seek out the next vehicle in front of it to pace and that's not always easy all right here we go car in front of us is slowing down i'm not using my foot uh, to do any of this the car is just slowing down to match them going to have to make a turn up here so I am going to have to use my foot to do that unless the car in front of us happens to make the exact same turn but even if they do we're making a turn uh, a left turn to join the highway and I really wouldn't want to let the cruise control decide my speed at that situation We've got to follow them and do what they do or else the thing's going to get kind of lost. But here we go. I have my foot over the pedal just in case, but I'm not actually going to hit it unless I have to. Yep, there we go. Nice, full, complete stop. A turn signal. This car is equipped with them. So now we would just sit here until the light turns green. This isn't a great point to give an example. I'm going to come back to this later in the video. For now, we're just going to talk about um, how this thing looks on the highway. So we're on the highway now. The speed limit is 55. The cruise control is set to 66. We found the Amazon vehicle in front of us with radar, and we're just following them, pacing them, which is why we're going uh, seemingly slow. Oh, one thing to note over here. So the car knows the speed limit. See that red mark there? That red mark is the point where we're speeding and how far above the speed limit we're doing. The green mark is where the range in which the cruise control is set. So as soon as I can get a clearing in the left lane here, we're going to, um, actually let's first set the cruise control up to 71. So we kind of go a little bit. Gonna change lanes like we did there safely. Uh, let the cruise control find the next car in front of us and 
outpace them. Turns out the flow of traffic is a quite a bit above 71, so let's go up to 79. And now we made our pass, so we're going to move to the right. I'm not sure why that guy put on his four ways. I'm not sure what's going on there. He thinks he won. I don't think we were racing. Sure, what's going on, but okay, we'll keep an eye on that. All right, we're going significantly slower than cruise control is set, so let's go into the left lane again. Start pacing the car in front of us. There's the four ways rider. I'm not sure why she did that, but she did slow her speed from about 80 to uh, 65. Hazard reported ahead. Thank you for that, Waze. Okay, so this is how awesome the vehicle is on the highway with adaptive cruise control. We're still not able to keep up with traffic even though our cruise is set to 80 in a 55 speed limit. Um, maybe, maybe we'll try using the right lane and I'll be able to demonstrate a little bit. There's the hazard. They were changing the tire on the side of the road back there. There was two vehicles and a bunch of people, so I didn't feel the need to assist them. Okay, so once again we'll go through that. The vehicle has identified that there is another vehicle in front of us based on the fact that it sees that, or you see that BMW symbol there in the screen. And we've caught up to that vehicle which means we're now slowing down, as is indicated by the fact that we're charging. And so we're just keeping distance with that vehicle. And as long as we drive forever and ever, we'll just uh, follow that car in front of us until they change or we change or we run out of gas. All right, let's see here. I wanna wait for traffic to clear just a little bit behind me. I'm gonna jump into the left lane. There we go. Everything okay. It seems okay behind us. So now we've changed lanes. See how there's no longer a vehicle represented in the center there? That means that uh, we don't see a car in front of us. So we're just going to go whatever our target speed is. Which in this case is, uh, I think, 80. Something like that. So perhaps you can see up in the distance another CRV. I think that's one that passed us earlier. We're going to go ahead and catch up to them now with cruise control, adaptive cruise control active. Ah, oh, I missed it. So the car identified that there's a vehicle up there while I was telling you that we're catching up to that vehicle up there. So watch, watch as the speed changes. We're catching up to that vehicle. We're charging now because we're off the throttle. We're slowing down without using the brake. So we match their speed, which I really like. There's nothing worse than a cruise, an adaptive cruise control system that slams on the brakes just because you caught up to somebody. You kind of want to gradually catch up. So check out here on the speed side where you've slowed down to about 65. Our green is up here in the 80, meaning that's where our target is set, uh, our cruise control target is set. Let's move out to the left lane again and see if there's... Nope, there's no vehicle identified. Perfect. Now, this system, of course, cannot detect what kind of vehicle we're following, so it always just shows a BMW. All right, we passed a bunch of people. Let's switch back to the right. Because one thing we always do is keep right except to pass. All right, while I was talking there, the, the radar system up front identified there is indeed a vehicle in front of us. I'd call that uh, about 300 feet up there, maybe 400, I'm not sure. Trying to time it out here. Let's see. Let's go from that. One, two, three, three seconds at about 80 miles an hour, which is about 105 feet per second, something like that. 104. Yeah, 300 feet. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll do the math and put that on the screen in production. So that is a little bit on the adaptive cruise control that this car uses and how it works on the highway. 
And you can see why this would be awesome on a long, long trip because you just don't have to necessarily think about, oh, am I going a little too fast or a little too slow? Set the thing for as fast as you want to go or as fast as you're willing to go, which is as fast as conditions allow or maybe it's the speed limit. And then you can just follow the car in front of you forever. It's nice, it just takes one more thing, one more thought out of your uh, out of your head. And then as, as traffic builds, like we're starting to see here, the system will just automatically slow you down or, or keep pace with the vehicle in front of you. Which is extremely nice because now I've been sitting here talking to you. I've been, okay, I'm not really that distracted, but let's just say I am distracted. And uh, we're just letting the system take care of one thing for us. Now, I don't necessarily recommend pacing a truck, a truck like this because trucks are known to kick up massive pieces of debris more likely than a car would. However, if you feel pretty confident in the place you're driving, go for it. And the reason I say go for it is because a truck is a big target for the radar system. A truck cannot slow down as well as you can slow down in this vehicle or any vehicle that's a car, really, or a truck or an SUV. I mean, pickup truck or SUV. Look at that, we're braking hard and the system's doing all this for us. And we're braking really hard. So anyway, so that's, that's exactly my point. Um, a little vehicle might get lost in the radar potentially, especially if the weather is maybe not perfect, but a big vehicle like this um, that we're following here is, is less likely to get lost in the radar um, seeking action. <laughs> I don't think I said that quite the way I wanted to, but I think you get the point. You know, if you follow a big vehicle that has a large radar profile, the car will have a harder time losing it, losing track of it, losing sight of it. And you have the ability to set your following distance all the way out to the maximum, which I don't know what that distance is, but um, you know, you can minimize your risk of uh, kick up debris just by increasing your following distance, having a good PPF on your car, and so on. Oh, great. So we're on our maximum following distance, and you can see how far this following distance is now at this point. It's pretty far. So at this speed, I wouldn't really even have to worry about kick up. Okay, let's get back into some of the low speed following that this vehicle does. Let's talk about that real quick. So, we are in a more commercial zone where the speed limit is uh, 40. We still have the cruise control set to 80. Flow of traffic is about 45, 50. So, you can see what we're going to do here. Well, first of all, we probably don't really want to keep the speed set that high because um, we really don't want to be going that fast at any point. I mean, it's 80. We're doubling the speed limit if we go 80. So here we are, we've slowed down. I'm gonna go ahead and set this cruise control speed down to something a little bit more reasonable for this zone, which is 60. I'm also going to take it out of battery control mode and put it in um, max E-Drive, which should help make things a bit quieter. Okay, here is some information that I wanted to know before I first drove the vehicle in the adaptive cruise control mode. What will it do in certain situations like this? Well, for one thing, it, it's not gonna see red lights or stop signs. So if you come flying up and you're the first car or the next car at a light, <laughs> you're, you're gonna just blow right through it. Um, so you better stop yourself with your foot. The car has no capacity to see a red light. So we're watching the vehicle in front of us. Uh, we're going 30 miles an hour, which stinks, but it is what it is. Um, again, I'm not doing any of the foot controls. All I'm doing is steering. And I'm just following the vehicle in front of us. They take off, we take off. They slow down, we slow down. If somebody cuts us off, the system might react a little bit to that. It won't blow the horn, but it might it might hit, jam the brakes on a little bit. All right, we're up to uh, about 50 there. Remember, we're set to 60, so we're just gonna go as fast as the car in front of us. If they go too fast, we go too fast. 
we need to change lanes here because eventually we need to make a right. So we change lanes in traffic. The vehicle quickly identified the vehicle in front of us that we need to follow, and there it is. Now, here's another situation. So we've got a curve to the left or a curve to the right. If I were to change lanes on that curve, the vehicle might have a hard time identifying the vehicle in front of us. And so it might just punch it and take off and, and catch up to them a little too fast. So here we need to change lanes again. We did so. We've identified the minivan up there, which again has a large radar profile. So it's a great contender of a vehicle to follow. And that's all we're gonna do now. So let's just watch. Um, I guess we could watch on the screen. I don't I don't know what you want to see here. I'm still not using my foot to do anything except um, possibly take over braking in the event that the system malfunctions or does something um, unexpected. But otherwise, this is a fully automatic situation right here. We're on battery. We are using adaptive cruise control to maintain speed with the vehicle in front of us. As they slow down, we slow down. Hopefully we get a red light so I can show you just what happens. Um, when the vehicle in front of us stops. Okay, they're slowing down. We're slowing down. We're gonna make it through this light. Okay, we're stopping. We are stopping, and that's good. The vehicle is stopping using its cruise control to stop us. I haven't done any of that. And what I really like is that we didn't come to a full complete stop. We just sort of got down as slow as we needed to go and then the car continued to drift that last little bit which is just a little bit easier to, to get going again all right now here's what I really wanted to show you what does it do when the car in front of us starts going again well um, looks like nothing so if you tap the brake just tap it gently then the car knows it's time to go again and it will resume the activity of following creeping through traffic as we're doing now we're just creeping along I've not done anything except hit the brake pedal I'm still not doing anything we're just following the vehicle in front of us I'm ready to stomp on the brake if I have to because I don't want to hit the car in front of me but so far the system has proven to be pretty trustworthy that has been a video about how the adaptive cruise control works in your BMW. In this case, it's a BMW 530e xDrive i performance with adaptive cruise control, like I stated earlier. Um, if you don't have adaptive cruise control on your model, then I think you're just going to get a traditional, um, a traditional cruise control. You're just going to hit a set speed and maintain it, and then you might get a beeper in the in the dash or a light that pops up or something that says you're gonna hit the car in front of you, take braking uh, actions, but I don't think you'll get any adaptive adaptivity. Um, again, if you don't have this button here, then you don't have adaptive cruise, oops, sorry. If you don't have this button here and this button here, then you don't have adaptive cruise control. I've test driven vehicles that did not have that and uh, these are just uh, block off plates. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Instagram at bturismo underscore IG. And check out the website if you're looking for detailing products, www.bturismo.com. Thanks for watching. Always remember, keep right and pass left. We'll see you in the next video.